Let's talk about partial factoring. This is a really helpful tool that we can use to find the vertex of a quadratic. So let's do an example. Let's say we have y equals 2x squared plus x minus 1. If you have this equation and you want to find the vertex, we have a couple different options, right? In the past, you could complete the square to put it into vertex form. Um, you could factor it, find the roots, and then find the point halfway between the roots. Or you could use that special equation we talked about, x equals negative b over 2a, right? But if you don't want to use any of those, what you can do instead is just do some partial factoring. And what that is, is when we factor just the first two terms. So if you common factor these first two terms, you can take out an x, and you'll be left with 2x plus 1, and then you have minus 1 over here on the end. What you can do next is you can set this portion of the equation to 0 and solve for x. And that might seem a little confusing as to why you're doing that now, but it'll all make sense in a bit. So you say x times 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, and you solve for x. And so what values of x would make this equal to 0? Well, this x here, if that x is equal to 0, you multiply, it all becomes 0, so that's one solution. And then over here, 2x plus 1 equals 0. If you solve for x in this case, you're going to get x equals negative 1 half, right? You bring over the 1, divide by 2, you get negative 1 half. So we have two x values here, 0 and negative 1 half. Now what can we do with these, right? What do they mean? Well, recall, when we plug these values of x in, this part becomes 0, right? And so if that part becomes 0, then your y value becomes negative 1. So that means we have two points here. We have the point 0, negative 1, and you also have the point negative 1 half, negative 1, right? Because when you plug in either of those x values, that first part becomes 0, and you're left with negative 1. So we have two points. Now, you might say, well, how are we any closer to getting to the vertex? Well, we're actually very close, because if you recall, all quadratics are symmetrical, right? If I were to draw a little sketch here of what we have so far, 0, negative 1 is right here. Negative 1 half, negative 1. Say so this is negative 1 half, and it's at a height of negative 1 like that. So, so far, you have these two points. Now, your quadratic probably is doing something like this, right? Because those two points are at the same height, they're equidistant, or in other words, they're just as far apart from the middle, right, from the vertex on either side, right? And so to find this x value, where the vertex is, you just average those two x values, right? The vertex will be right in the middle. So you take those two x values you found, the 0 and the negative 1 half, and you just average them out. So you'd say 0 plus negative 1 half divided by 2, and that's going to equal negative a quarter. So the x value here at the vertex is going to be negative a quarter. And so if you want to find the y value, you just have to plug negative a quarter back into your original equation, right? So y is going to equal 2 times negative a quarter squared plus negative a quarter minus 1. Solve this. Negative 1 over 4 squared is 1 over 16. 2 over 16, that's going to be 1 over 8. You want a common denominator, so minus a quarter. You can make that into minus 2 over 8. And then minus 1, you can make minus 8 over 8. Add these all together. You're going to get negative 9 over 8. So that's the y value at that vertex. So your vertex, you could say, is located at negative a quarter, negative 9 over 8. That's the point where your vertex is located. And we can see if that makes sense with the sketch, right? Because if you notice, these two points are at a height of negative 1. This point looks to be a little bit lower than those, right, based on the sketch. And sure enough, the y value here, that's slightly lower than 1, right? Negative 9 over 8, that's a little bit below negative 1, because negative 8 over 8 would be negative 1. And so this answer that we got actually makes perfect sense as it relates to the sketch. Okay, so just to recap, all we did was we common factored the first two terms, we determined 
what x values you would need to make that part of the equation equal zero. That's what we did here. You get two values for x, and we know the y value at those points because this just goes to zero and you're left with the negative one. So you have two points now. Those two points on your quadratic are equidistant from the middle, meaning the vertex is right in between them. So you just average those two x values, and that gives you the x value at the location of your vertex. And then to find the y value for that vertex coordinate, all you have to do is plug that x value into your original equation, and you get the y value. And that's how we find our vertex. And that's it.